Gorish and Skogel are so strong. I'm honestly not even leveling up my Madeline right now in season two plus of Call of Dragons, which is really kind of sad, but highlights how strong the two new heroes are going to be together. So in this video, stick around for all the things you would need to know about Goresh, why his skills are shockingly good, what the best talents are going to be, and these are different than you might expect, what pet you should use, what artifact. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and as you know, I make guides for every single hero in Call of Dragons, so if you haven't already smashed that subscribe button, consider doing so now for Call of Dragons videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. Gorash, the new infantry hero from the Strongest Lord, is crazy powerful. Use the timestamps in the description to jump to whatever part of the video you're most interested in. We gotta start by reviewing the skills and understand what the heck he does, because this influences everything else we're gonna talk about for this hero. So the first thing you need to know is that he gives a 50% attack boost and a 15% damage taken reduction for a solid six seconds. This is pretty good for an active skill, although I always worry about active skills that, like, don't instantly get value. The thing about infantry, however, is that you're not typically entering, leaving, entering, and leaving combat. You kind of run it down with your infantry to hold a position. So in that regard, I think that a long-lasting ability can be okay. From here, second skill. Counterattack, 20%. Defense, 15%. Very easy to understand. From here... This is where the hero really pops off. When Gorish's Legion launches a counterattack, they have a 50% chance to deal additional damage to five surrounding legions. This is up to 200 damage factor, and it can trigger twice per second. This is what he's all about. You know, I've often felt like with your infantry, you run in, and you're kind of just holding a position until you die out, and the goal is just to do counterattack damage. And you really... Today, can't do enough counterattack damage with like Madeline and Garwood or Madeline and Nika to make that march trade very well, not against a proper enemy who matches you. So this is really the thing infantry have needed, and it's finally here. It's just a big AoE counterattack mayhem. That's it. From there, the final skill is about besieging a city or stronghold. You get 20% attack. So good news, bad news. On Gorash, you want to max the first three skills. Then unlock the fourth skill. Okay? So you make him 5551. Five, five, then, if you ever get the awakening, what that is going to give you is an extra 10% physical attack on the active and 5% damage mitigation. So it ain't much, but if you are rallying, right, then that is super relevant. And he is a rallying hero. He's designed to tank. So. What is it that has me really hyped about Gorash? Well, as I was saying, this is all about the counterattack damage, which is what infantry are here to do. But this gets really hype when we talk about the pairings. Normally, I talk about talents first, but we need to talk about pairings. Because you see, Skogel does something kind of funny. She makes it so that you deal additional counterattack damage every second. Well, that's actually not entirely accurate. I mean, yeah, it's extra counterattack damage, but you actually deal extra counter attacks. Oh, well, extra counter attacks is really crazy because guess what? Those counter attacks trigger ruthless. That's right. Even if you're getting hit by one person, you can have ruthless trigger twice in a single turn. And by the way, I can prove that to you. I have in fact tested that myself. All right. I found the turn. Here it is. So Ruthless, third skill from Goresh, was triggered when he launched a counterattack. And then Blood-Soaked Battle, which is the Skogel active skill, was triggered, which means you got an extra counterattack. It's this, literally the same amount of damage as the first counterattack was. And that triggered Ruthless. So there you have it. A double Ruthless trigger in one turn from one enemy. Well, I mean, it's so obvious that these two are now meant to be paired together, which again, is a design paradigm I'm actually not a huge fan of. I love when heroes can work with many different combinations and like not just like the two released most recently, you just smash them together. I mean, it was that way for Sindri and Fragar, and here we are with Gorash and Skogel. But I'm not disappointed. I ain't mad. 
I ain't mad about getting some proper counterattack. And look, hey, yo, this is one of like the first commanders in, uh, if this were Rise of Kingdoms, this is the first commander with some actual thick legs. The legs are bigger than the arms, which is like how human bodies, I think, actually work. Although this is not a human, it's an orc. So this is neither here nor there about the skinny legs on humans and rise of kingdoms that's really not what we're here to talk about okay so anyways back to the topic at hand goresh it's going to be a beast man pair with skogel it's going to be absolutely mental who do you pair with however if it's not skogel and this gets so weird it gets so weird because of the way the buffs work in this game unlike in rise of kingdoms the predecessor to this game the game that this is made off of where active skills and passive skills or talents would all stack together um, but active skills would, you know, overwrite other active skills. In this game, you can only get one buff of a type at a time. So when this says you get a physical attack boost, this is the only physical attack boost you can have. The stronger buff will prevail. When this says you gain resistance, only one resistance buff can be active at a time. I'm telling you this because you'd think, oh, well, what about Gorash and you pair with Madeline? Nope. Not going to be good in my opinion. The thing about Madeline is she gives a physical attack boost, not going to stack with Gorish. The resistance effect from the Awakening skill, uh, is, yeah, it's the Awakening, not going to stack with Gorish. Only the stronger buff will prevail. So I don't think that Madeline is going to be the jam, weirdly enough, with Gorish. Even though I'd kind of love to see it, I don't think that that's a thing. All right, well, like, where else could we look at, at commanders we've already got? I mean, you could pair with Nika, but... I don't think Nika's defensive enough for Gorish. You really want to survive. And I like the idea of boosting hero skill damage, elevating the third skill on Gorish, but I don't think this combo is really going to be it. Infantry need to soak damage, not deal damage. And ideally, while soaking damage, you deal your damage. So anyways, I, I don't think Nika's the jam. I think actually she's kind of like amazing in season one and then dies off so fast it's astonishing. Um, so then is Garwood where it's at? Well... If we get a look over here, um, let's see here. Has a chance to increase physical damage dealt. I mean, Garwood is a possibility, right? Gorash, Garwood. And there's not exactly a lot of synergy here, but here's a resistance effect. Man, the resistance effect on Garwood is not going to stack with Gorash as well. So, like, Gorash is weirdly incompatible with so many heroes. It's kind of shocking. Uh, you could pair with Hosk. The attack boost is going to stack here. So so the, this could work, but I'm not in love with this combo, the gorash Hosk combo. I don't think it's doing enough for you because although he cares about kind of counter damage, sort of, I don't think that Ruthless is scaling off counter damage. It's scaling off of skill damage. So I, I, I don't quite see the synergy there either. And I don't really see the synergy with, for example, Thea. I mean, it's kind of there. You boost your hero skill damage until an active skill is used. That's kind of cool. And shielding is all right. I mean, that's defensive, right? He de Thea does make it so you take a little bit less skill damage. I mean, that's good. I don't know if this attack boost is going to stack. I assume it is with Gorash. But I'm, I'm not convinced this is exactly it either. We don't have any flying infantry, so... You know, you get 20% defense, but if you had a flyer, you'd get some extra attack and march speed. You're not going to get that. I feel like Goresh is kind of in a weird spot where I don't know that there's a great legendary to pair with other than Skogel. And, you know, some people are going to look to like Indus that I I don't love that either. I mean, yeah, it's going to heal and inflict a debuff. And that's like kind of cool. Right? You take less counterattack damage, which is kind of cool, but not really the thing that you're concerned about. I've always felt like Indus was overhyped for infantry. So I, I don't see a great combo to pair with. I suppose, you know, you, you start looking at epics, you've got Eliana and Bakar. Um, Bakar is at least going to make it so that you're going to bleed the heck out of a ton of people once you get low, right? That That's a thing, I suppose. You've got a damage bonus over here, you know, a little rampage effect, but I think you're pairing with uh, Skogel. Goresh and Skogel, they go together. I think that's it. Um, that's how I would do it. Now, with regard to your talents, here's what I'd recommend. If you go into your talents here, 
there's something kind of funky going on. And if you're pairing Gorish and Skogel, then both of them have buffs on their active skill. So in my opinion, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your talents all the way up into the infantry tree, and you are going to take Iron Will. Extends the duration for buff effects gained through rage skills by one second when your legion is composed of entirely infantry. I mean, bro, now you make the buffs seven seconds long. I don't think you have a six second rage cycle. Otherwise, I'd say, well, you don't need this. But assuming that it is a seven second or longer rage cycle, Iron Will makes it so that you get nearly 100% uptime on your buffs from your active skills. And since the whole point of those active skills is to just be like big, big buffs, like Iron Will seems like a slam dunk of a choice. I do think ready for battle, extra counterattacks, 8% chance of it is not bad when you're hit with a normal. But I just think that given how crazy the active skill synergy is here with Iron Will, it's almost like... They looked at Iron Will, they were like, how do we make this good? And then they released these two heroes together. Now, along the way, what do you get? Well, you want to reduce the skill damage you take. Normal attack damage boost is not doing very much for you, nor do I feel like this heal is doing much, nor do I feel like this march speed is doing much. So I guess you could take whichever of these three you think is relevant. Like with Skogel, you have a little bit of a heal, heal but it just ain't, ain't much. None of these are doing much. So I opted for the march speed. The maneuverability could be relevant. We'll see. From there, I took Cool Headed, and I have some misgivings about Cool Headed, and I'll explain that in a little bit. When you cast a Rage skill, you gain Shelter, which is a defense boost. You do want to survive. We'll talk in a minute about why that might not be so great. You may be better off with Furious, and I think you probably are increasing your attack by 4%. This is going to depend a lot on what your artifact choice is, so we'll get to that in just a bit here. From there, we've got All Conquering. Taking less normal attack damage is exactly on plan. Um, increasing your counterattack damage for this combo is exactly on plan, and reducing the damage you take from being surrounded is 100% on plan. So from there, we actually go into the tank tree. We take the extra march speed because, I mean, look, if you're not in the right spot, you're not relevant. And then I like to take even less normal attack damage. So this is the damage people deal directly to you when you're being targeted. From there, I took Unyielding Spirit. 10% chance when you're taking normal attacks to reduce your hero skill damage taken by 8% for 5 seconds. You'll love to see that. And then one remaining point you could honestly put wherever you want. You want March Speed? Great, take the March Speed. I took a little bit of a heal. Plenty of great choices here for where that remaining one talent point could go. And I honestly think this is like your one build. This is it. This is your one build that you use. While I like the idea of reducing your normal attack damage taken when you get low, I feel like this talent is not offset by the craziness of this one over here, Iron Will, for this combo. I feel like the Iron Will is where it's at. I don't think the heal is where it's at. Like, I don't think... You're getting what you need in here, right, to, to do the job in the top end of the tank tree. And I don't think the PvP tree is kind of where it's at. Um, increasing your damage dealt. I mean, hit points are cute. But but why increase your hit points by like a, a petty amount of percentage points when you can get? I mean, I mean think about it. This buff gives you, th think about what that does, um, one extra second of... 60% attack and 20% less damage taken and also 15% health and doing an, a, a whole turn of extra counterattacks. Now, this damage will reduce apparently based on multiple targets near, near, being nearby. I mean, look, we're going to have to look into Skogel a little bit more, but the fact that I could show you in a battle log, in a 1v1 anyways, that this attack was basically an extra counterattack and it was equal to in a 1v1, the amount of damage of the first counterattack, that's that's huge, man. So yeah, increasing the duration of those ability, abilities is exactly where it's at. So from here, the question becomes, all right, Chiskul, what pet should we use? And I feel very weird about this because the game recently released a Sindrian and Fragar pet over here, the Night Rock. So we don't have a pet. For Skogel and, and Gorash. And I worry that like you go invest in a pet and then they're just going to release one next season that's actually designed for the hero combo. And it's like WTF. I spent all this money in, like on a pet and then you re release the actual pet design for the combo. I don't know if they're going to do that or not. 
but I do think that there's really not an ideal pet now. Your best bet if you want to be a little bit punchy, and what I'm personally working on is the Venomous Lizard. And I feel like if you have an active skill shield, the Frost Bear is better. So in the Madeline combos, this does something very similar, but you have to have an active skill shield. But on the Poisonous Venom, uh, venom Lizard, right, like the Venomous Lizard, the thing that this is doing is every time you're attacked, you have a 12% chance to inflict poison on the attacker. Now, this can only trigger once per second. But, like, if I actually had a high agility score here, I mean, and I'm getting hit by, like, 10 things, 9 things easily when I'm in PvP, then, I mean, I think this could be as high as, like, 100 damage factor, Maybe, uh, maybe I mean, 30 damage factor if this was a one-star talent skill. I mean, you could look at 100 damage factor per second, potentially, from this poison. And you could be doing this poison every second. So, you know, the poison lasts for three seconds. If you're inflicting one of these every second, you're looking at, like, 300 damage factor a second, potentially, of damage. Like, I think in, this is where the Venomous Lizard comes into play. I think this is where it's at. And maybe the developers feel like, no, this is the pet that's ideal for this combo. This is what the Venomous Lizard is for. I would believe that. And here it is. Venomous Lizard. That's the pick. I also think Sand Lizard could be a choice, but it doesn't scale. It doesn't scale the way the Venomous Lizard scales from getting hit so much, which is why I'm not into it. But if you took the Sandstone Aura and then picked the skill that made it a single target heal, making your unit more survivable is not a bad thing. Like, if you live longer, you counterattack longer. We know that infantry are going to make it so they get more tanky um, from their, their sort of skills, or not their... The, the infantry unit ability gets more tanky. You gain defense, right? We, we know this. This is in the infantry unit design, if you haven't seen. Um, let's see, right over here. Each time you lose 3% of units, you gain 1.5% defense, up to 50% defense. So we know you're going to get really, 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 really tanky. Um, and so heals get really powerful when you get really tanky. But anyways, I think Venomous Lizard is where it's at for now. Um, and that brings us to the artifact. And this artifact is technically in-game, although not really here yet. Uh, it was from the Riches of the Forest, which I find is a very difficult event to actually get one of these key artifacts. But making it so that you can force enemies to attack you is fine. The rage gained here, though, is huge, so you'll activate your skills right away, which is great, and then you gain shelter for 30 seconds. Remember when I said that I think you might regret taking shelter? Well, if you have the Spirit Bone Torque, you have 30 seconds of this shelter, which means your talent-based shelter isn't going to do anything, but you gain, at base level, 15% defense, which is huge, and you reduce the normal attack damage you take, which is huge, and you're boosting your counterattack passively, all the time, regardless of who you equip this to, which is huge. So I think this Spirit Bone Torque is kind of, it's its just going to be the jam. And it boosts your defense um, from Dust and also from Star Levels. So uh, this is this is it. Spirit Bone Torque. That, that's the play. Now, from here, there are other things you can do. Like, for example, um, one option that I think is super reasonable, and I'm using it now, is the Dragon Scale Armor. Okay, it gives me hit points. And it gives me shields. Um, and it gives attack boost to, you know, three nearby legions. Um, your legion gains range resistance when your wielder gains a shield through raid skills. Well, like, in the combo I'm proposing, that's not going to happen. So the whole back end of this does literally nothing. So uh, unless you pair with, you know, Thea, and I personally think that's kind of a mid combo, but not top tier. Like, I think it's very obvious that Goresh and Skogel, they just go together. All right. Um, so from here, right, what else could you do? Well, I mean, there, there are other options. Um, I think your best free to play option, if you're going to go for Skogel and you've been saving up your universal tokens to invest in him, is probably going to be the Fang of Ashkari. You really want something defensive on your infantry. So defense, defense is where it's at. And you get a ground effect that does damage. I think that's fine. Actually, a better choice, if you had it, would be Kramar's Warhammer. Yo, this is sick. Uh, but there is actually downside. Like, is it Kramar's Warhammer? Well, wait a minute. Let's talk about that. Um, the enemies can't counterattack. Like, you can't counterattack an enemy that's not attacking you. <laughs> so if you stun a bunch of enemies, 
the, you're not getting the benefit of the Skogol combo. I mean, I suppose if you're using Gorash, no, I no, I mean, I I don't no, I don't think I actually think this is bad. Weirdly enough, I think this is bad in this instance. I love this thing. I think it's the coolest thing ever. I happen to get one um, from the uh, polls that you get at the end of the season. I can show it to you real quick. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. But like uh, the defense defense is great, but I, I don't think you want to stun your enemies. You want them to be hitting you. Then the dragon rift is just not where it's at. This is all about attack. I'm not on that plan. Uh, the springs of silence are all about attack. I'm really not on that plan. So I think I think your best bet if you're not going to use the Spirit Bone Torque, you're not going to use the Dragon Skill Armor. It's going to be the Fang of Ashkari, which, hey, look, it's an oldie but goodie, man. It's a, it's a classic. It's really strong. Um, something else people do that's kind of cute, I don't know that it's good, but it's kind of cute, is you can use Storm Arrows to teleport behind an enemy and, like, really wreck them by blocking their physical position. Uh, you know, there's times where that that really pops off. It, it really does. Um and I don't think the march speed from the spring bird feather is really where it's at. I've seen some weird stuff where, you know, you could use this and pair with, you know, uh, put this march with a bunch of cavalry commanders, like 37 and a half percent march speed. You're going fast, baby. But I'm not so sure about that either, right? There's there's a bunch of weird things you can do, but if we stick to what the, you know, the game design is telling us. It's use these two heroes together, use the spirit bone torque. And that's, I think, the best in slot. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. I am going to be working on Goresh. I'm going to take him to 5551 as soon as we have some fighting. I am getting him from the daily uh, VIP, so two tokens a day. But once we actually have a fight, I'll go and put that in there. And then, as I mentioned, um, I do plan to still use Madeline. I plan to use multiple infantry combos. So that's either going to be Madeline Garwood or Madeline Nika. But I'll talk about that more in a different video where we're talking about what I think the best combos are for Season 2+. Plus. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you want to see the last time I did a video kind of breaking down what I think some of the best combos are in the game, card will be in the end screen in just a second. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.